Hi Squirts, welcome back. Here, Annie M here with another story to tell you. This one is called Peter Cottontail on His Way by Andrea Posner, illustrated by Linda Carl and Christopher Knoll. It was the day before Easter in April Valley and Colonial Wellington B. Bunny was deciding who would replace him as Chief Easter Bunny. The Chief Easter Bunny is in charge of carving chocolates, sewing bonnets, and of course decorating and delivering Easter eggs. Peter Cottontail is a likely candidate, he said to himself. I know he's not perfect, but he reminds me of me when I was his age. Later that day, Colonial Bunny presented Peter Cottontail with his official egg basket. Carry it with pride, he told the happy rabbit. But just as the Colonial was about to declare Peter the new chief Easter Bunny, Nasty Iron Tail arrived. According to the Constitution of April Valley, Iron Tail announced the chief Easter Bunny shall be the one who delivers the most eggs. Iron Tail then challenged Peter to an egg delivering contest that would take place the very next day. I'm not afraid of Iron Tail, Peter told the Colonial confidently. Peter was so sure he was going to win that he threw a big party. He stayed up very late that night. Before he went to bed, he told his rooster alarm to wake him at 5.30 the next morning. As soon as Peter was asleep, Iron Tail snuck into his house and fed magic bubble gum to the rooster. The next morning, the rooster couldn't cock-a-doodle-doo. Peter slept on and on all through Easter Day. That same morning, Iron Tail set out to deliver his Easter eggs. Nobody wanted an egg from such a nasty bunny. Though he tried all day long, he was able to give one egg away. But since Peter didn't deliver any eggs at all, Iron Tail won the contest. Peter Cottontail knew that he had let everybody down. He left April Valley promising to make it up to them somehow. After walking for days and days, Peter found himself in the Garden of Surprises with Seymour Sassafras. Peter told Mr. Sassafras what had happened, and, and there isn't anything I can do about it because Easter is over, Peter added. Mr. Sassafras had just the thing to help. It's a yes tomorrow mobile, he explained to Peter. It can transport you into yesterday or tomorrow. And Tone, the pilot, would take Peter back to Easter so he could deliver his eggs and win the contest. But not everything went as planned. Iron Tail discovered what Peter was up to and sent his spider to fiddle with the wires of Yester Tomorrow, Yester Morrow Mobile instead of heading to Easter. And Tone and Peter landed right in the middle of Mother's Day. Peter tried his best, but no one wanted painted eggs on Mother's Day. Next, they flew into a 4th of July celebration. No one is going to want Easter eggs on the 4th of July, either, Peter said sadly. Easter eggs, no, but 4th of July eggs, maybe. You, have, you just have to improvise, suggested Antone. Peter found costumes and paint and tried giving out eggs as the Independence Day bunny, but still, no one wanted them. Peter had the same bad luck on Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. The next stop was Valentine's Day. Peter painted a whole basket of red and pink Valentine eggs. Surely someone would want these beautiful eggs, but when Peter wasn't looking, Iron Tail found the eggs and put an evil spell on them. He turned them green, inside and out. No one on Valentine's Day at the Valentine's Day party wanted Peter's green eggs. He hopped back into Yester Morrow Mobile, more upset than ever. Before long, Peter made himself made another crash landing. This time, he found himself in the middle of St. Patrick's Day. Everywhere Peter looked, he saw green. He stood on a sidewalk, offering free green eggs to anyone who wanted them. Peter's shamrock eggs were the hit of the St. Patrick's Day Parade. He gave away all of his eggs and finally won the contest.
Back in April Valley, Colonial Bunny congratulated Peter. You have now shown great ingenuity. Therefore, you have won the right to be the official chief Easter Bunny, he said. Easter morning, everyone cheered as Peter delivered bonnets, jelly beans, chocolates, and, of course, Easter eggs all to the children of the world. Alrighty. Thank you guys so much for coming in and sitting with me and listening to my story. Thank you so much. Peter Cottontail is on his way, Sprouts. So I will see you all later. Auntie M, saying goodbye until the next story.